We're going to be uh, picking up where we were last time in Galatians. We're going to be looking at Galatians chapter 5. But we're not going to go very far in Galatians this morning because uh, we're going to uh, support some things that Paul said in Galatians by some things that Paul said in Ephesians. Now, in, in um, Galatians chapter 5, at verse 16, he makes this statement, he writes this, he says, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. For the flesh sets its desire against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. I think any Christian that takes their Christian life seriously and has been a Christian for any length of time knows all about the struggle that goes on within us. On one side, there is the strong pull of the Holy Spirit. And on the other side, there is the strong pull of Satan and wickedness and evil. And somewhere in the middle where we have placed our heart and our commitment, God expects us to lean in the right direction. But just because we might lean in the right direction and lean towards the side of good, evil never stops pulling. Satan never gives up. Wickedness and sin is always plaguing us like a dog yapping and snapping at our feet. It's just part of life. And it occurs to me that we do a lot of preaching in churches and um, uh, in different places that explain the gospel, which is important, which explain theology, which is important. We talk about prophecy and, and historical things that have happened in the Old Testament and the New Testament that yet affect us today. And those things are important. Amen? Amen. We need to know those things. In fact, Baptists have a history. And you know me, I'm not one to, to look at one denomination more seriously than another, but I am a Baptist. I've been a Baptist my entire life, uh, since I was a week old. My mom took me to church the first week I was born. I never had a chance. Amen. <laughs> but an interesting thing happened to me when I went to seminary. I went to Golden Gate Theological Seminary in Mill Valley, California, to work on my master's degree. Well, when I, when I got there, um, one of the classes that I had been enrolled in was, um, a, was an Old Testament survey class. And it had a prerequisite. You know what prerequisites are in school? You have to have this class before you can take this class. I didn't know. I just took what they put down and, and I went to class. Well, I was... Um, I couldn't take that class because, so they put, they didn't find out until I'd been in school three weeks. And so they said, no, you got to go back and take the first class first. I said, okay. So they put me back into this class, the prerequisite class. The next semester I was going to take that class. So I'm three weeks late, right? So I go into class and I give my little slip to the, to the professor. He says, oh. We're having a test today. Um, just, you know, take the test, do the best you can, and then we'll talk after class. I said, okay. So I took the class and, and got 100%. Now, that's not because I'm so bright. It is because I grew up in church where God's word was pounded into my head by my mother, by my dad, by my Sunday school teacher, by my grandma, by my grandpa. I mean, I, I grew up just knowing the things of God. Praise the Lord. That's why it's so important for children to be in church and Sunday school. So anyway, a week later, I go back. 
and, and the, the, the professor's passing out the tests. And, and he said, some of you got some really good grades in here. Uh, Mr. Duncan got 100%. How'd you do that? I said, sir, I've been in church all my life. This stuff's been, this stuff's been pounded in me. I dream of it. I know it. Not that I'm smart and not that I'm bragging, but that's the way it's supposed to be. Thy words I will hide in my heart that I may not sin against God. And my mother made sure that those words were hidden in my heart and that they stayed there and she reminded me on a regular basis. Praise God. Amen. You knew my mother. <laughs> and you know what I'm talking about. She went on to be with the Lord now, and she's in a lot better shape than all of us. But Paul makes this statement here. He says, and I just want to mention it again, but I say, walk by the Spirit. All of the things that we learn in church, that we learn in Sunday school, that we, that we learn in Bible study, that we learn in the Bible, are teaching us how to walk. Now, that's just a phrase for how to live. How we walk in our life. And I'm going to take you on a little journey for a moment in Ephesians. Because Paul wrote Ephesians too. And Paul mentions many, many times in Scripture, be careful how you walk. Remember how to walk. And he starts off in Ephesians, teaching us how not to walk. And in Ephesians chapter uh, 2, 1 and 2, he says, And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. That's where we come from. And when we find Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are put in a position where the way we walk changes. We no longer follow after the lies and the sin and the foolishness of the world. Now we follow in the steps of Jesus and godliness and the direction and power of the Holy Spirit. And so we, he goes on then to chapter 2 verse 10 and says in Ephesians, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus or good works which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. Amen. Walk in good works? Yes. Meaning, wherever we go, no matter what we're doing or who we're with, we should be doing the work of Jesus. Folks, that's what it's all about. That's why we learn all of this stuff, so that we know how to walk. My daughter, who uh, we've been praying for recently a lot, Laura, who just had the incident in the hospital and gave birth to a new son. Um, she used to come to this church when I was here the first time. She was a, a young teenager in this church. Well, I don't even think she was that. I think she was nine or ten. And we used to have homeless camped all around this church. It was much, much worse then than it is now. We had tents and camps. And we let them because their attitude was a little bit different then than it is now. But that's another story. My daughter had such a concern for these people. She says she'd come with me at, to prayer meeting because we had youth going on at prayer meeting uh, in another class. At, and she says, we need to get them some coffee or something. They're cold. So every, that, that one day a week that we came over here, she and I would go to Jack in the Box and get coffee and, and sandwiches and stuff, and we'd take it out and pass it around. She used to insist that we do this every week because it was in her head. We help people. We love people. We try to reach people for Jesus, for Christ. That's what it's all about. Our good works is not so that we can get a pat on the back. Our good works is not so we can wear the, remember the, the little pins and buttons that that uh, 
used to be handed out in Sunday school and in Baptist churches. My, my six month button, my one year button, my two year button, one time the buttons and, and little tags on them got, got so long, I tripped over my button. I mean, it, it, it almost got to the point of ridiculousness because we were all, but the point was made. The point was, we are trying to achieve something in our lives so that we might represent Jesus Christ in the proper way wherever we go. Amen? Amen. Amen. Then he goes on in chapter 4 of Ephesians, verse 1. Therefore I, Paul, the prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk, walk in a manner worthy of the calling for which you have been called. If you are a believer today, you are a believer because you have been called to be a believer. Now, you may be a daddy, you may be a mama, you may be a grandpa, you may be a grandmother, you may be a kid, you may be a cousin, you may be a lot of things, but if you are a believer, you have been called to be a minister unto the Most High God. And I don't care what you do for a living, your job in the realm of God's world is to share the gospel and be tender-hearted towards people that need Jesus. Amen? Amen? That's what it's about. And that's how God wants us to walk in a certain way. Walk in a manner worthy of your calling. Well, I don't know that I've been called to do anything. I, mean, I just go to church and mind, mind my own business. No, we weren't called to mind our own business. We were called to serve God. And to be his ministers on the streets and in the gas stations and in the supermarkets and in the schools and in the places where we see our friends wherever we go. To at least drop some words and some hints and some ideas about choosing to serve God and to accept Christ. Walk in a manner worthy of our calling. Now, we are called for many things. I was called to be a Christian. When I finally understood everything when I was seven years old, when I got baptized and became a Christian, my mama saw to it that I found out what I needed to know, and when I was ready, I said, listen, let's giddy up, let's go. But I've been called to many other things, and so have you. Some of you have been called to be a deacon. Some of you have been called to be a Sunday school teacher. Some of you have been called to um, uh, uh, be a wife or a husband or a grandma or a grandpa. And we have responsibilities of our calling with our children and with our grandchildren and with our family to be sure they know and understand the things of God and to encourage them to embrace the things of God. Amen? Amen. Paul goes on in Ephesians. I told you this is from Galatians tonight. Yeah, well, we're in Ephesians. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5, verse 2. Look at this one. And walk in love, just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. Walk in love. Amen? Amen. Jesus said in the Gospel of John, a new commandment I give unto you. Now, I don't know, prior to that, my uh, teaching in the Old Testament, how many commandments did we have? Ten. Ten? Well, he said, a new commandment I give to you. That you love one another, even as I have loved you. So how many commandments do we have now? Eleven. Eleven. You know, if we, we struggle to keep the other ten, and we, come, we struggle to keep the eleven because we get so caught up in our lives, so caught up in our jobs, so caught up in, in sin and the world and, and stuff around us that we allow to influence us, that we also have a problem with the eleventh one too, and forget to love one another. Amen? Amen. Oh, listen. I point one finger out there. I have three more pointing back at me. Because I do the same thing. Oh, listen. I'm bad news on the freeway. Somebody cut me off. Because I'm on the freeway a lot. Back and forth, back and forth, you know. And I'm not making an excuse for it. But someone will set me off. It's when somebody almost hits me. Or comes too close to stop it behind me. Or cuts in front of me. Or I see them cut in front of me.
to somebody else, and those little signs that sit in the back that says baby on board, you know, and I'll see some truck driver cut off a mother, and it just makes my blood boil. Until God told me one day, he said, son, <clears throat> you got a problem. And it's true, I did. It bothered me. He said, every time you see something like that, what do you think I want you to do? And so I finally realized that when I saw something happen on the freeway that bothered me and provoked me, that I was supposed to pray for that person. That was God's way of bringing somebody to my sight that needed prayer. And so I started doing it. I pray for the people that I see that obviously are in too big a hurry or obviously don't care about anybody else. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Amen. And I just pray for them. Whenever you go on the freeway and you're in that situation, whenever you're going down Gary with all the traffic or down Mission with all the traffic, uh, God forbid that you have to go down hold. But uh, anyway, <laughs> anyway um, pray for the people that get in your way or that create a problem or do this or that. Amen. 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 So walk in love. Remember to love one another, even as he loved them. Now look at chapter 5, verse 8. For you were formerly darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. So there is darkness in the world. Is that not right? Amen. There, there's a big time of darkness. People are believing lies. People are following the wrong leadership. People are looking in the wrong directions for answers. And they are in darkness because they don't know any better. Why don't they know any better? Because we haven't taken the time to share with them and to help them understand the truth of Jesus Christ and the light that he offers to our, to our minds. Yesterday, um, uh, as you know, I'm, I'm also a part-time contractor. And there's an office building that I take care of. And that my guys that work for me take care of. We had a break in um, uh, to that building. Into the, one of the offices is a jewelry store. And they broke into the electrical room and turned off the electricity to the jewelry room. And you can guess why because they wanted to be able to break into the jewelry store without the alarm going off. Well, they didn't get that far. They got it turned off, but then they had to run away because the patrol car just happened to come at that time, and they ran off. So the owner of the jewelry store comes in in the morning, and he has no electricity. And so he calls me, you know. And so I go down there, and I have to fix things. I can only do it temporarily because of the situation. But we got the lights back on. When I walked in his jewelry store, I had to keep my arm, my hand, on his shoulder as we walked down the rows and into the back, into the areas where they repair jewelry and stuff, because there was stuff everywhere and I was tripping and stepping on stuff and everything. And it reminded me of this verse because I could not see a thing. It was totally dark. There was no windows back there. And he had this, little, you know the, the light we have on our phones? He was going like this with his phone, like trying to see. And I had my hand on his shoulder following him. Neither one of us could see, neither one of us knew where we were going. And that's the way it is in the world. All of these people that don't know the truth or have ignored or disregarded the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ or the truth of the Bible, they're wandering in darkness and they can't even see that they are in a bad place. And it's up to us. To love them. And in our daily walk, to look for an opportunity to share with them the gospel. Chapter 5, verse 15 in Ephesians says, Therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but as wise men. God wants us to be wise. We're not always that wise. Sometimes we do things that are just but thank God we have a Lord who loves us and who forgives us by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And sometimes he has to do little things to get our attention. And said, uh, DJ, you know, like it's this little tap on your shoulder. Uh, DJ, why are you doing that? 
Uh, turn over and look at this direction. Go in that direction. God ever did that to you? Just, yeah. Come on, will you just wake up and turn around and do what I've been telling you to do and not what you want to do? Over in, I mean, you know what I'm talking about. We have those kinds of problems in life. Not that we're out on purpose trying to defy or disobey God. It's just sometimes life takes us down pathways that we don't even know we're on the wrong pathway until we stop and look around. I remember one time when I, my, I first got to drive the family car, when I just got my license. And I got, I thought, I'm going to go on the freeway. Go check this car out. And I went going down the freeway before I, 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 I looked around. I didn't know where I was. I had passed so many off ramps and just kept going, you know, because I was driving this car a little faster maybe than I should have been. And I realized I was lost. I didn't know where I was. So I took the next off ramp. I pulled off. Of course, in those days, this is back, you know, when you rub two sticks together to get a fire. I didn't have a, a GPS or a phone. So I didn't have anywhere to go to find out where I was. And I pulled into a gas station. And I said, oh, virtually, I, 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 I want to do what I do. Let's go and ask Do you know how, how to get to Whittier from here? And he said, sure, you lost. I, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> and he showed me what off ramp to get on and where to go to get back to Whittier. And I went back with my tail between my legs. Because I just was getting too involved in something I didn't understand. And I got so steeped and lost, I didn't know where I was and I didn't know how to get home. Remember the story that I told a couple of weeks ago about the, the, uh, the, the young man, the prodigal son? That took all of his dad's money, went off to a city, Amen. squandered it, and the speedy pigs? That happens in life. Amen. It really does. Now let's go back to where we were in Galatians, okay? So all of these, these particular issues that Paul mentions in, in, in Ephesians, and there's some in Colossians, and there's some in uh, Corinthians, and I mean, they're all through his letters. But the ones in Ephesians are outlined the best. And so when he says this in Galatians, where we read, but I say, walk by the Spirit, he's talking about all of these things that mentioned in um, uh, Ephesians, like uh, your good works, walk in them and share them. Walk in the calling that you've been called. Walk in wisdom. Walk in light. Don't settle for darkness, but walk in the Spirit. That's what we're called to do. That's what this walk is all about. In other words, God has taught you a lot of things. God has shown you a lot of scripture. God has revealed his plan for you. Now walk in the Spirit and let him lead you in those things. A lot of times. We hear God speak to us, and we say, thank you, Lord, for speaking to us. But then the first little problem that comes up in our life, it takes us and carries us away, and we forget all about what God was saying to us over here. You know what I mean? Amen. It's easy to get sidetracked and distracted, isn't it? We have to be wise and not let Satan do that to us, because he will do everything he can to distract you, to tempt you, and to pull you away from what God wants you to do. Well, I'm going to close here, but I want you to remember this. God is always with you. God is always with you, no matter where you are, no matter who you're with, no matter whether it's darkness or light, He is always with you. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And who can separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, we will conquer through him who loved us. For neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord because God is always with us. If you're on a ladder painting, God's with you. If you're sweeping up outside, God is with you. If you're driving on the freeway, God is with you. If you're cooking dinner, God is with you. If somebody comes to the door, God is with you. 
God will never leave you nor forsake you. And folks, I'm going to tell you, sometimes the most elementary things of the Word of God are easy to forget. Amen. You just don't think about it. You know, you get busy maybe watching uh, Big Bang Theory or uh, something on TV or going to a game or something, football. What, what Carlos? <laughs> and we get sidetracked. We don't think about the things of God. Our mind is somewhere else, folks. I'm challenging you today. To keep in mind that God is with you always and He's always speaking to your heart. And He has a ministry that you have been called to that is your responsibility. And don't forget, Satan will do everything he can to stop you or sidetrack you or distract you. Would you stand with me, please? Every head bowed and every eye closed for just a moment. Now, no one's looking around. That's why I have to close your eyes and bow your heads. No one's looking around. I don't want to embarrass anybody. This is between you and God. If there's something in your life today, small or big, or something that you're wondering about that you're struggling with, maybe you're trying to make a decision, maybe you need direction from God, I don't know what it might be, but you're, you're struggling and you need, you need some help from the Lord, you need direction from God. I would like to pray for you, to pray that God will be able to make it clear to you what He would have you do. And if you have that kind of situation, would you just raise your hand and let me see you, then I'm going to pray for you guys. Raise your hand high so you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Anybody else? Okay. Heavenly Father, you've seen the, the hands that have been raised today. You know what's going on in their heads. You know what they're dealing with. And Father, you know what your plan is. And I lift them up to you in the name of Jesus, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you will show them exactly what to do. Show them exactly where to go. Show them exactly what to say. And Father, give them the direction that they need and bless them. And make them conscious of the fact that you are always there by their side. Now, if you are here today, and you know beyond any doubt that you have never asked Jesus into your heart. You're not a born-again Christian to church maybe before, and maybe you know a little bit about the Bible, but you have never asked Jesus into your heart in a forgiveness of sin, would you just raise your hand so I can see you? Just slip your hand up. Okay. Heavenly Father, I thank you for each person that's here. Bless them. Speak to their hearts. Guide them. Direct them. Bless them in every way. We pray for the Gideons, Lord, and the Bless them. Open doors of opportunity for them. And Lord, for those that are here that are looking for jobs, that are looking for places to live, that are looking to do this or to do that, give them direction and give them guidance, Lord. And for those that we've mentioned that are sick today, we pray for them again, lifting them up to you in Jesus' name. And Father, we love you so much. Bless them. Bless them. Bless them. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the Lord is in this place. One more time. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Pierre, come up here, would you please? Pierre? I want you 
want you to just listen to some prayer. Would you do that? Thank you, brother. Father God, we come to you in Jesus' mighty name, Lord, and we are so thankful for the congregation and this message that we received about allowing the Spirit to lead and guide us. And I thank you for this congregation. We ask for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you, folks. What happened in Spanish? I don't know. I see you. No, they weren't. Oh, what are they it goes all shut up. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe uh -oh. they bailed. Oh. They got <laughs> sick. <laughs> Maybe they met in a park or something. You know, they got sick. Something. Hard to tell. <laughs>